Christina runs a boutique marketing practice called Innate Marketing Genius, where she helps solo business owners own their voice, market to their strengths, and get the right clients consistently. Her holistic marketing approach grew out of a lonely, chaotic time when she moved to Boston all on her own. And she discovered her own way to really connect with people. I'm excited to learn more about what Christina does. I've had the pleasure of connecting with her as well. And this is applicable whether you're marketing a business or you're just in conversation and connecting with other humans. So you're going to want to stick around for today's episode. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Rat Race Reboot. Uh, Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here, Laura. (laughs) Um, We've had the pleasure of connecting um, through a mutual acquaintance. And I want to hear all about the work that you do because I think it's fascinating. You have a very unique approach to helping people own their own strengths and their voice and communicate in a way that's authentic. I was just looking over your uh, website as well. And I had, there's one little quiz there that I'm going to tell people about that how to be you. It was a marketing archetype, which I think is so phenomenal, whether you're marketing yourself or just, you know, like I said, connecting with other humans. Um, but I want to dive into all of that, all the exciting goodness you have going on, your book, how you serve people. But before we dive into all of that, um, I want to hear a little bit about your journey. What got you to the space where you're serving and connecting with people in this way? Yeah. So where to begin? I will just say that really the foundation of what I do is sort of, it comes from this awareness. I notice that when certain people tell certain stories, I'm riveted. And then if another other people say like a similar story, I'm completely bored. And what I noticed was if the speaker or author or whatever was really operating from their deepest why, it's like I couldn't get enough of it. And it's not just their deepest why for themselves. It's in service to others, which we can talk about. So I have been studying that, like, why am I fascinated by you, but not this other person? But if the other person tells their right kind of story in alignment with their why, then it's fascinating. It's just a matter of some tweaks and self-awareness, and it just kind of changes the game. That's sort of the, you know, the foundation of what I do. How did that, where did that come from? I, uh, when I was in Boston on my own, I decided I needed to conduct a field study. And I worked with 40 entrepreneurs over four months of time. And God bless them. They were all game to try a different kind of approach. I walked them through a guided journey, which helped them understand like how much they love helping other humans. It's sort of this sneak attack way of understanding that about yourself. And so every time, like, and that was the beginning of coming up with a marketing plan. I'm like, how about we just start out with how you like helping people and then we'll come up with all your strategies. So I came up with 40 marketing plans, but guess what else I came up with? I also came up with archetypes. Each person, when they went through that journey, I mean, I, I listened to them. I was with them. I connected with them and understood you know, what they were going through. And I just saw so clearly each time an archetype. Like one um, real estate agent, she was a master of ceremonies, the way that she connected, right? Mm-hmm. Another, like an interior designer I was working with, she was a certain kind of like adventurous guide in the wilderness of sorts, right? It's just like it, they were all really unique. And once they had that archetype, everything else got really clear. It was like, oh, this is how I love to make a difference in the world. Um, so I'll, I'll pause right there if you have any questions about all that. There's a little more to the story, but that yeah. was the beginning. Oh my gosh. No, I want to hear all about it. And I am an organizational development 
person and I'm a research nerd. So I love that you did your own <laughs> qualitative research and uncovered some themes and these archetypes. So no, no, please continue. I want to hear yeah. more. So yeah, then a couple months later, I was asked to give a talk and I asked myself, what the heck am I going to talk about? And so I went back to the 40 marketing plans and archetypes and I realized, huh, there's actually really strong umbrellas here. There's common ground amongst a lot of them. So for example, you know, a lot of them were very nurturing and very just warm and empathetic. A lot of them were really sassy and celebratory and had all this like life to them. So the five categories that I landed on are nurturers, adventure guides, door openers, steady presences, and celebrators. And they each like that alone. That was my talk. It was great. So ever since I put that together, what I've been trying to understand is, all right, fine, you're a celebrator. What does that mean for your deepest why? What does that mean for how to tell a story? So that's a whole other layer to it. But um, that was the big aha for me. And I never look back. Every time I give a talk, people are like riveted. What am I? How can I use it? What do I do with this? Like, it's just been so fun ever since. That is fascinating. So um, I had a chance to go through your quiz and I learned that I was a door opener um, and I think adventurer too. So I, and I thought, wow, that does, that sounds like me just wanting to, to share and show people what's possible. But I think it's really fascinating how you're taking not only the messaging that people more than likely align with based on their archetype, but I love that you're helping them get into a deeper why. Why are they, why are they doing what they do? And more importantly, why the deeper why in terms of how they're serving others too, which I, I don't think that a lot of people um, really dive deeply into and it it makes so much sense. Yeah. And, and just really quick, if you're sitting here listening to this, you're like, all right, tell me some why. So I'll just rattle them off real quick. Sure. So if you're a nurturer, your deepest why, and I'm a nurturer, your deepest why is to make it safe for others to thrive. If you're an adventure guide like Laura, your deepest why is to see the people you serve attain their biggest goals, right? Like you just want people to go for it. If you're a door opener, you are love to open up entire new worlds of possibility just in perspectives, right? Like natural educator. If you're a steady presence, your deepest why is assuring people that they can get from here to there, no matter how bad it looks, right? And you've got the resources to do it. And then to celebrate your deepest why is that people live the good life. You just mm. want people to, like, you just want to bring the good life. And there's many ways to do that, obviously. Yeah. So those are the deepest whys, in case you're curious. You know, what's interesting is sometimes, and I know I found myself fighting my natural communication style. So if you consider the adventurer and I'm like, come on, let's climb this mountain. I've done it. You can do it. There was sometimes when I would share stories of things that I've done because we're so programmed, I think even as women, this is like International Women's Day, right? So this mm -hmm. month and there was always guilt and shame around, oh, that's braggy. But it, I wasn't saying things that I've done or shining the light of awareness on opportunities or of challenges that I've overcome. It was more to show people, and I would say it, if I can do it, you sure enough can do it. But I was fighting myself and I would see other people share the things that they've done and I didn't take it in a negative way. But I felt, but seeing this right in front of me kind of gave me permission, in a sense, to to just show up in an authentic way, right? Yeah, and actually, now that you've mentioned the adventure guide archetype, I will say that I've worked with several women with that archetype that have wrestled with their own, you know, can I be that bold? Can I be that, you know, that forward leaning? And it's about uncovering their true voice. And again, if your deepest why is you want people to go for it, it's like yeah. you're not telling these stories for your own benefit only. You're doing it in, in 
you know, service to other people. And, and that's what I actually have learned about adventure guides. We don't care about your expertise. It's really weird. We just don't need to know how nerdy you are and how deep your knowledge goes. We want to know, number one, how bold you are and what you're up to. And number two, what's possible if we engage with you? Like what is on the horizon that I haven't even considered. So you're kind of like right in your lane when you're telling stories like that, because you're, you're living by example and moving people into action. That's your power. Ah, I love it. Embrace it. And, you know, I find that no matter what we're doing, whether it's communicating on stage or just communicating with one-to-one with another person in a personal context, uh, I mean, I think there's space to show up in those ways, whether it's in a business or in, in personal conversation. It really could help advance the conversation or open people up to possibilities. And that's why I love this. I love this framework. Yeah. And, you know, over the weekend, someone mentioned that Tony Robbins has this beautiful kind of framework that I think really relates to our conversation, which is, um, you know, people have a state of being, they have a story, and then there's a strategy, right? And a lot of times when you're you're challenged by something, you're always looking for a strategy to solve your problem. And so what I'm doing with these archetypes is really getting you into a good state because your state influences your story, right? Like if you're in a, a generous loving, like, I just want to help people state, you're going to tell a totally different story than if you were desperate for business. And so, um, right. Like if these marketing archetypes help you be in that state of like, oh, I'm in my why. And I just want to help people. Then your story is going to change. It's going to be much more compelling and generous and your choices on how to get out there, your strategies and how to like solve people's problems in your communication, that's going to be different as well. So I start with the state. Thank you, Tony Robbins, for giving me language for that. Um, And then the story comes after that. And then the strategy comes after that. I love that you're bringing this up because this is what we talk about in Rat Race Reboot and in my coaching and in my community is it's mindset what's that saying? Mindset eats strategy for lunch. My, you know, so it's like <laughs> your state is, you know, what you're saying is an energy that we are projecting out to other people. And, you know, I, I talk about this in the context of attitude. I I was recently speaking at an army uh, military ball talking about attitude and how it doesn't necessarily, it matters what we say, but the, it's the the energy behind it that connects with people most. So like you said, you know, you could have two different people sharing the same incredible story, but the energy behind one is going to grab you. The energy behind the other might not because it's not who they are, you know? Um, So true. Yeah. So it's so important to get your mindset right. Be in the experience, be the person you want to be. Um, be, do, have, you know, just be that person that does those things and then you'll have those results. And when you come from that state, the energy that you project out, you're giving people another person for them to respond to and they're going to respond differently in in kind. So I, I love that that's your foundation. I have a couple of fun things to try because I know, you know, you you like to have these episodes short and sweet, which I think is great. So I'm just going to go right into like, hey, try this. It's fun. So yeah. number one <laughs> is um, the, uh, you, you mentioned a quiz. So I have an assessment. It takes about five to seven minutes where you can discover, dear listener, what your archetype actually is. And you might be one, you might be two. So just a heads up about that. And um, and that's it. And, and you'll have the link in the show notes, but it's innatemarketinggenius.com forward slash assessment, just in case someone's like chomping at the bit. And then <laughs> the other thing to try, and this is a whole other conversation um, that is related to my book, but I'll just say, you know, it's a fun contemplation, which is if you could give anything, like leave reality for a moment and pretend you had all the money in the world and you could give anything to the whole wide world or even just to people in your neighborhood that you found on the street and you're like, this 
would be so fun to give. And don't worry if you can in real life or not. But what I've been studying, I call this the generosity practice. It, there's obviously more to it than that. But that alone gets you on a, like when I say that to you, Laura, and even ask that question, like what would be really fun to give out to all of life or to all the people or the people? In, like, how does that land with you when I even just mention that question? It shifts my focus, um, you know, even just thinking about giving, you know, just the word giving, it it shifts my energy. Um, yeah. And so it just creates more openness and expansiveness. Yeah, I have been uh, also nerding out on that. Like, how can a 10 minute contemplation about that make a difference because it is very, a little bit ethereal and we love to have our results. So I have counted 21 results that happen internally and externally when you simply just think about that, which is why I wrote my book called The Generosity Practice Book. Uh, And it it just helps you ease into that whole way of being because it's a gear shift. We're all walking around like, even if you're a really good person and you love helping people, a lot of times a martyr aspect comes in. It's like, oh, I'm such a good person. I'm just, you know, sacrificing myself for others. And there's sort of a tiny bit of suffering happening there. And this is all about like, no, giving can be unbelievably fun and joyful. And so it's a little bit of a change there. Oh, I love that. And I I was just reading, um, well, I'm 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 gonna rip my headphones off if I reach for it, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just reading some uh work by Robert Russell, and it, it's about yeah. prosperity. And the particular chapter that I was looking at today was about giving and how sometimes when we feel like maybe things aren't going well, or we're, you know, in our business, maybe it's not growing as quickly as we like, or we're worried about finances or whatever, we tend to retract. And we're kind of we're choking off receiving when we do that. And so really, getting in the energy of giving, you know, if, if what you can give is a smile, if, if what you can give is being present and listening to somebody that's giving, if what you can give is imagine in your imagination, sending love to somebody who maybe was dangling from your nerves the other day, that's, that's giving. And that, that puts you in a whole different energy, like you said, but I find when I put myself in an energy or a state like that, in a a, a state of gratitude, a state of giving, a state in, you know, how would I be if I were truly being expansive and giving and in my dream fulfilled, when I find solutions or opportunities that kind of bubble up into my mind or my imagination or, you know, in a conversation, those solutions are in harmony with who I truly am. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's energy. It's just energy. And so when you can be in that way, that's who you truly are as a being. You're not the lack, you're not the scarcity, you're not the fear. You you are an expansive being. So I, I love that. And I yeah. want to hear more about that in the book too. Yeah. Well, you're just making me realize that you know, marketing and communication is often a place where we hit our lack beliefs, right? Because you're basically, you're tasked with going out and expanding slash maintaining the health of your business. You're you're tasked with going out and perhaps sharing ideas that not everyone is open to. So it's, it's sort of, I just realized that when I heard you talking, Laura, it's like, yeah, if, I mean, yes, this stuff is relevant all over the place, but I think especially when we're sharing our work and sharing our ideas with people, we face those beliefs. And so isn't it powerful to sort of get out ahead of that and really commit to a mind frame, um, you know, a framework of, I mean, call it whatever you want, jolly generosity, you know, like loving when you love giving out to the, like, it's just, it's hard to put your finger on it, but it's sort of, to me, it's like the bigger flow of the universe. Like the universe is ultimately unbelievably abundant. And so it's just this beautiful, bigger flow, but that sounds maybe a little airy fairy, but I don't care. (laughs) You know, it's, it's funny because I'm in a doctoral program about two thirds of the way through. 
And it's not. And and part of the reason why I really wanted to kind of go on that journey in leadership psychology and neuroscience is because I I wanted to understand the brain more and people more, but also it's been exciting to me because there's evidence and science and psychology behind a lot of the things that we're saying in terms of why and that energy mm. and mirror neurons and and how people respond to what we're putting out there and the why behind it. So um, I would love to normalize this conversation because it's yeah. it's true. It's it's really um, we create our reality by by the energy that we project out there and we can tune in to our, our desires in our minds first i always say it at the end of every podcast everything's created twice always first in your imagination and then in physical form and so i love this idea that you're bringing to the table here of getting in that state of gratitude before engaging <clears throat> it's a kind of like um abraham hicks says segment intending you know, where you're yeah. when, okay, I'm going to get into this conversation or I'm going to do this piece of work. Let's, let's think first, how do I want to be? How do I want this? To, how do I want people to feel when they receive it? Get in that headspace first and then do, I mean, I don't do that all the time. And it's, this is such a great reminder and a great conversation. Yeah. And in, in answer to your question about the book, the reason I wrote the book and it's, it's called the generosity practice book, 40 Days to Unstoppable. The reason it's 40 days, it's not about Jesus, although that's great too. Um, he had his own journey and this is quite a journey too. So I'll just say that this work is, um, it's so, it can go really deep and the depth of the practice comes when you are able to get out of your own way and just really listen to what wants to come through. So that's closing your eyes, being with the unknown, stepping out on a ledge and asking what feels good to offer to life today and allowing your hair to blow back with what might download in your mind's eye. Like many times people have told me they're in tears. They're, you know, they're just totally moved. It just completely grounds them yet. You know, they're still open and expansive to their life and the people around them. It's like a bridge to the other people in their life. But it takes, you know, it takes a little bit of work to stay quiet, be okay with going into the unknown, and then like letting something drop in. So that's the deepest level of the practice, I would say. Oh, that sounds yeah. beautiful. And we'll definitely have the link to the book there so people can grab a copy and and start on their 40 day journey. I I love that. I'm yeah. I'm definitely going to check that out as well. Um I like having structure, I find in some of these practices. So I don't know about you, but I tend to um I'll find a reading that I really like that connects with me and I think part of that comes from being able to drop in and listen to yourself and create that quiet space so that you can tap in and listen to your intuition. But um, yeah, so like grabbing yeah. onto a book or a particular passage or um, a quote, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I also, I had somebody like a, a designer in Vienna of all places, put it together. And I just little plug, like she has done such a beautiful job making it gorgeous so that it's not just like a practical workbook. It's, it's a fun exploration that with all kinds of quotes and, you know, when people, I actually did a field study with 40 people in five countries to, to do the practice. And so there are quotes from participants from that in there talking about the practice, how they used it. So it's, it's really rich and hopefully really supportive of someone going on this path. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, um, so is there anything else that we need to, to know about the book? Cause I'm already sold. I'm getting a copy. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to institute this practice. I love it. Um, so how do yeah, people, I mean, it's, one, one last thing I'll mention oh, since sure. you asked, um, within the book, there are links to audios because everyone likes to be supported in different ways to do these kinds of things. So yeah. yes, there's the workbook, but then there's 10 minute, five minute, you know, whatever you need, there are really levels of depth to the practice. And so there's different recordings 
like for each of those. So you're totally fine. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So are they kind of guided meditation type of things or? Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. I, I, I can't wait to check it out. I definitely will. And I recommend that everybody, I'm going to have all of the links in the show notes. So definitely take those assessments, grab your copy of the book, get rolling. Let's do this together. 40 days getting into gratitude and getting into that headspace, um, which really enables you to be and stand in your authenticity and, and be your most authentic self when you're showing up in the world. And that, that that's a beautiful thing. I, you know, I find that a lot of people who are caught up in the rat race, I know this was me, we're being pulled in 12 million different directions. And we don't really know what's going on inside of ourselves. We don't really know what's inside there. All of the answers are inside of you, right? And when we can take that time to pause, when we can claim it for ourselves and set those boundaries, it just makes life that much more rich. And it gives you more clarity um, to know who you are and how you want to show up in this world and enables you to create that ripple effect in the world that you truly want. So these practices that you're talking about, you know, they might seem simple, but they're not. I I was talking with somebody recently um, about working hard versus doing the work, the mindset mm -hmm. work. And that's really, if you can kind of carve time out from working hard to doing that mindset work, you're going to find that you don't have to work as hard in what you're doing and you can carve more space out for yourself. So I, I love all of these topics that you're bringing up. It's, it's, yeah. And yeah. again, one sort of super practical way to try this right now is let's say you're going to go give a talk or be on a podcast or meet with a client, do that generosity practice contemplation, like what would be really fun and enjoyable and joyful to give out to the world right now? Just do that for five minutes, then go give your talk and get back to me. Because I have heard from person after person, like they get up on stage in front of like 2000 people. They're like, I did this practice beforehand and I was completely present to every human in that room. Things like that. So just something to try. Ah, uh, yeah, no. And I can totally attest to that because I have definitely felt a difference when I was inward focused, facilitating a class for a group of people. And I was worried about how will I show up? How will they perceive me? Will I get this right? Will my slides work? I want this to be perfect. Will they like me? And basically, I was thinking about myself, worrying about myself versus how can I give? How can I be really present with them? What do they need? And I felt like a rock star at the end of the day because I felt so grounded. I felt present when they asked questions. I wasn't thinking, oh my God, what do I don't know the answer? You know, I could I could be with them. And you know, it, it just was a much better experience and a much tighter connection with other people. Yeah, fantastic. That's beautiful. You know, this is applicable in everyday life with our goals in marketing. So I love how you infuse all of these practices that we hold near and dear in Rat Race Reboot in our community. Um, how do people get in touch with you? What would be the best way for people to kind of start on their journey and getting clear on yeah. their communication? Other than the book, I would say a really fun thing is what I already mentioned, which is the assessment. So again, any marketinggenius.com forward slash assessment. Because once you figure that out, you're invited to give me your email address and then you're going to get a series of, okay, so you're a door opener. Here's how you can use it today. Here are some things you might try. Here's why you're so great. Here's what kind of dessert you would be if you were a dessert. So I have a little cheeky fun with you too. <laughs> I love that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a good way in and it gets you on my website. So if you want to reach out to me, go for it. Um, the way that I work with people is, you know, one-on-one -on -one, typically um, in a boutique coaching program, but that's all, that's all on the website. Okay. Well, excellent. Yeah. Well, I have loved our conversation. I'm so grateful that we met and I know our listeners, everyone's going to get so much value out of this conversation today. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to leave our audience with before we close? 
Yeah, I would say that no matter how scattered you might feel yourself to be, because there are so many options, like just marketing wise alone, let alone just life on how to get out there and how to be and all that jazz. What I have found to be the fastest way to come back to your true voice and perspective is to just consider one person that you could serve when you sit down to write something or do anything. One person that you can tune into and it's like, what would make their life better? What do they need from me? And just being intuitive about that, it changes everything super fast. Not that it has to be fast, but in this case, it is fast. It's very helpful. So that's what I got. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love it. I love, love, love it. And yeah, and I'm not going to get all woo woo, but that's the connectedness of us. We're all connected. Yeah. And that's you're tapping into that. Um, Christina, I want to thank you so much for adding value to our audience. I'm so grateful for you. Um, and thank you for joining us on the show today. Yeah, yeah thanks, Laura. It was great to be on your show. Thank you. Um, well, for those of you listening, remember, Everything is created twice, first in your imagination and then physical form. Leave us a review on ratracereboot.com. I'll have all of this information and Christina's contact information in the show notes so you can get connected. But until then, we will see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates. 